Technically, yes, says Rev. This is Reverend Chris Valka, director of Center of Faith Culture in the University. At the University of St. Thomas in Houston, Texas, who also cautioned against excess. While the desert desserts and alcohol are typically avoided on Ash Wednesday, uh, Valka says it's really about the intentions behind the observance. What we're, we're really hoping for is a moment to recognize God is a present in the relationship. So, you know, these motherfuckers make all type of fucking ways to, to try to, 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 to make out their doctrine of men to be, uh, to be, to be good and righteous. It is wickedness, man. Cause look, first of all, uh, the Ash Wednesday thing, that didn't go back to this, uh, this, uh, this, um, this, uh, pagan God, uh, it's a Norse God or something, uh, called Odin. All right. When I first came in truth, I, uh, you know, was on fire about, uh, you know, uh, you know, certain information. I was, you know, I remember I was speaking about this and, I, you know, it, it's just it's just crazy how people, you know, I was saying that people just still, you know, Jake was still like, doing whatever. All right. And he got this Odin. Right. So uh, which when you go into an Odin. Is uh the same uh like you know that that here in uh Babylon and such uh the days of the week go back to these different pagan gods and all of that you know so you know that's how they reverence uh you know their gods and all of that um so uh let me see if I can get the info right here um right so let's see if it, it pop up. Yeah, this, uh, see if I can get the information in a moment. Let me just, let me just go right to it. Uh, let me see this one. So, Ash Wednesday, Origin. All right, so, let's see. Get something easy. Right, so here it is. This is uh off this beacons of truth dot com. It says the pagan origin of Ash Wednesday. It's not mentioned in the Bible. None of the apostles observed it. All right. Nowhere are Christians, which mean Christians being followers of the Hamashiach, which is Yahweh Shai. All right. Uh, commanded to keep it. It was not even. Officially practiced practice until nearly a thousand years after uh, they got Christ's resurrection. Like so many other non-biblical Christian customs, it has pagan roots. It's sad. It's a sad fact that modern Christianity has appropriated so many customs from the practice of he of the heathens, which is other nation other nations. And the Lord told us, of course, uh, uh, what's that, Jeremiah? Uh, 10, I believe three, uh, let me see if I got it on hand out of my physical sword. Uh, let me see if I could get it real quick. It says, uh, yeah, for the, uh, it says, uh, Jeremiah 10 and two, thus said, Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen and be, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cut it, the, the, a tree, uh, the forest, and it's like a, the work of the hands of workmen with the axe. That's going into Christmas. But, you know, the customs of these people is vain. All right. You know, it's worthless. And it's the heathen customs. This ain't the custom of the Israelites. All right. Of Jacob. All right. So, uh, let me, let me go down into it. Uh, so it says, uh, the, this ritual in, imposition of ashes is purportedly an imitation of repentance act of covering oneself in dust and at, in ashes. All right, which only uh, repentance, only Israelites can repent. All right. You know, you damn Edomites, you can't repent. All right. You heathens can't repent. You never received the law, so you can't repent. All right. Uh
Let me get a preset real quick. Because Esau think he could repent. And Catholic means universal, all right? You know, so that you know, all right? And they believe in all these fucking other god, gods and all. So, but it's just idols. So, this is, uh, this is, uh, Hebrews 12. I'll start here at 16. Least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau or, or as Joshua, all right? Which means waste away is he, all right? Lost his pigment, right? Who, for one morsel of meat, sold his birthright, which he sold down to Jacob, or Yaakob, all right? Who was the patriarch for the nation of Yashala, which we are, all right? Negroes, Latinos, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and the Americans, right? It says, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. So the so-called white man, Esau Edom, was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. All right, so there's no repentance for the so-called white man and no repentance for the rest of you fucking heathen. All right, there's only repentance on tip for, of course, Elect of Yashala for the Israelites. And that only the elect is going to um, repent anyway. The rest of the uh, nation, two-thirds of them, are going to gonna stay in their folly, you know, practicing all of these different um, wicked um, holidays and customs and this sin and, and just living iniquity, all right? Foolishness. So anyway, it says... Early early pagan origins of Ash Wednesday. It says the ritual imposition of ashes is purportedly an imitation of repentance act of covering oneself in dust and ashes. The marking of believers on Ash Wednesday is done in combination of another extra biblical routine called Lent. All right, which ain't, there ain't no fucking Lent in the, in the scriptures. Despite uh, Hamashiach command to command to, to his followers to abstain from the practice of disfiguring their f faces during a fasting. Uh, it has become a regular practice. He, he also told us to wash our faces during a fast. All right. Uh, it says the practice of putting ashes on one's forehead has been known from ancient times in Nordic pagan religion placing ashes one's above one's bro like yeah bro right was believed to ensure the protection of the Norse god Odin all right so when you uh reverencing and doing this lent and all of that you are worshiping uh and, and asking for protection from a false god all right which um the, the, the protection of the Israelites, the shield and buckler of the Israelites, the true power of the Israelites is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. As simple as that. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, you know, he's the one who fights for us, you know. You know. See if I can get a uh, it's a it's a precept right here. Uh let's see this is this is uh Second Chronicles twenty and seventeen. Ye shall not need to fight. In this battle, set yourself stand ye still and see the salvation of Yahweh with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go, oot, go tomorrow go oot against them, for Yahweh will be with you. All right. Um, so you know, when we would go into battles and such, you know, yeah, we would call on Yahabash and he be with us, and that's how we went. All right, our battles and such. All right. 
Simple as that. All right. Um, get a couple precepts into that. Uh, um, see, I believe it's in Psalms. Let me see. Uh, this is Psalms 3 and 3. But thou, O Yahweh, art a shield for me, my glory and lifter up of my head. All right. Our, our, our um, shield, our protection is in Yahweh by Shem Shai. Simple as that. It's not in no Odin. Okay. Let's get that straight. All right. Uh, I mean, that's basically it on that. I mean, you go into it. Uh, I'm try to go back to the article. Uh, let's see. Uh, of course, Valentine's Day go into this uh, Lupercalia. All right. Um, such. But um. I mean, with that, you could read the rest of the article. I don't want to make this too long. But, uh, you know, these fucking Christians don't know what the fuck they're talking about. All right? You got to watch out for these false prophets. All right? That's out here. You know, I just wanted to do something in the spirit. All right? Staying, of course, uh, you know, not slothful in business. Right? As is written in Romans 12 and 11. Uh, well, I'm going to start at. Actually, Romans. Here, I'll get it real quick so I could go get it. This is all through the spirit of Yahweh by Shemi. I'm shy that this actually came out. I was never sitting around uh, thinking about this, you know, particularly. But, you know, we got to feed the flock, all right? Got to feed the flock, all right? So this is... Uh, uh, this is uh, Romans 12. And nine, it says, let love be with it, this, this simulation. All right. So I'm going to go into that word, this simulation. All right. You get this. Uh, it, it has to be insincere. So you get this word. Uh, Anapokritos. All right. Which means unfrying, undisguised, sincere. All right. So, you know, amongst the, of course, the brotherhood. Of the body of Yahweh Bashem Yashai must be sincere. That's why we worship Yahweh Bashem Yashai in spirit and truth. All right. It says, let love be without this simulation. All right. Arbor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. All right. And we, 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 we cleave onto the law, statutes, commandments, which are uh, Kordash and they're good and for our, our uh, you know, our knowledge. All right. You know, our protection, you know, um, they, sh they keep us right. Okay. Our schoolmaster. All right. It says, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honoring and preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving Yahweh. All right. One, of course, uh, you know, one of our jobs is, of course, to watch out and, and feed the flock. All right. You know, so... Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, you've been edified by this. Uh, Slaki, if I rambled on a bit, this is due to Spirit of Yahweh by Shemuel Rashai. You know, came out with this. Uh, Shalom. Of course, uh, Yahweh by Shemuel Rashai by Hashem Racha Kodash Rakatham Kal Akim. Kal Akim, yep. Uh, you know, that's out there and such. All right. Uh, be, be, beware of all of these, uh, Different false, uh, you know, holidays and all. Uh, I'm going to read this before it ends, right? I ain't get it out. This is John 4 and 23. But the hour cometh now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father. All right. Uh, Abanawa Yahweh, right? In spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. All right. It says, verse 24, God it says, Yahweh Bashem Shai is the, a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. So, you know, we can't, of 